running a Node-RED server on a $5 device? Sounds like a great idea to me. Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech. I'm running my Node-RED server on Raspberry Pi Zero, but you can run it on anything really, from old PC to Raspberry Pi 3B+. Doesn't matter, the tutorial should be relevant to you, as long as you're happy with your installation of um, Node-RED, you should be great. Now, we're gonna talk about a few things today. But firstly, if you want to know why you should have one of these, and run your own server at home for whole automation, then go and check out my previous video, which is linked somewhere in one of the corners in here. And uh, if you already used Node-RED slightly, uh, then probably this tutorial is going to be a little bit too simple for you, so go ahead, skip to the next one if it's already published, and you will be happy because we're going to talk about basics in here. Lastly, if you prefer a reading rather than watching the video, there is a link in the description with everything I just said, with pictures and codes for you to use. So if you find it uh, easier, just click on that link and you will be able to follow through. Now, what we're gonna talk about today is how to get started with Node-RED. I'm going to uh, talk about getting started, about installing new nodes, about uh, basics of usage, about flows, nodes, importing, exporting data, and accessing the Node-RED from outside of your network. So if you're starting with Node-RED and you want to know all this, this is the right place to be. So without further ado, let's get started. This is your Node-RED window. To access this window, uh, you have to start the Node-RED and you can do it in two ways. You can either log into your Raspberry Pi via remote desktop or you can open Raspberry Pi and connect to it via keyboard and mouse and start Node-RED itself. Or you can access the terminal and type uh, Node-RED start start even and Node-RED will start. Now it will tell you where to find the Node-RED and this is the address, uh, this is the local address so in my case it's 192.168.1.183 and then port number which is default 1880 you can change that. Now if you want Node-RED to be running on start use this command, so sudo system uh, ctl enable node-red.service. If you want to stop it for some reason, you can do it by just disable node-red service, and that's fine. And if you want to stop or restart the node-red, just type in node-red-start, uh, and if you, uh, sorry, stop, and if you want to start it again, just type it start. So, once we have a node-red up and running, you'll be able to log into the interface and you're going to see this window. It's not going to have anything in it, but I've placed some nodes for you to explain. So what are the nodes? This is a node. This is one node, this is another node, this is a third node, etc. They're connected together by the dots, so you can delete the, uh, delete the uh, lines and you can add the lines as well yourself. Now, each node, each individual node, is a snippet of code which you can modify. So for example, I've modified some of the settings in here. For now, we're not concerning ourselves what I've done in here. Uh, and that will fill in the code with your input and compile the code when you deploy it to the Node-RED service. It's basically an equivalent of going to Stack Exchange and looking for some snippet of code and editing yourself and then you know running the code. So instead of uh, doing all that, all you have to do is just uh, drag a node from a side and the snippet of code is deployed and then edit the node to your liking. Now you'll see that two things. The triangle in here means the node has not been configured correctly and the blue dot in here means that the uh, node has not been deployed. So if I move a node around, it means something has changed with this node and the node has to be redeployed with, uh, with a button in the corner here uh, for the changes to happen. So let's delete this. And that's, I've not actually changed anything. I just moved the nodes around so I'm not have to I don't have to deploy anything. So this is how the node red uh, looks like. Now, you can find all the nodes in here, but you'll notice I have some extra nodes and you can install the extra nodes using Palette Manager if the node is published. So if you go to Options, Palette Manager, Install and type in any node, it'll give you like nearly 1500 nodes to browse from. There's even more nodes which aren't published via NPM, 
and to access though you have to go to the github and the best example uh, is the join which was in beta available as an unpublished node and required manual installation but now has been published to npm and you can install it via npm and you can find the join node in here as you can see this node has been already installed now what we, i'm going to show you it's a second way of installing the nodes and that's via the node red um, and terminal because this will allow you to do two things you can uh, install the published and unpublished node so let's start with the easy option which is a uh, adding a published node so all you have to do is just navigate to the um, location where the node red is installed which is here and in this location what you have to do is just run npm install and the name of the node and in this case i'm installing the join so let me do this quickly and the node will install what if the node isn't published and available via github uh, go to your terminal and access the directory dot uh, node dash red and then clone the directory you want to um, use so basically go to the github copy this link and use command which is as follow so we cloning uh, git clone and an address and then destination where we cloning to now you'll see in a folder we have a new folder which is join and we need to install this in you know, node red we are in the correct directory and what we have to do is link the node from this folder so sudo npm link join because join is our folder name and just like that the node has been installed on our node red uh, to execute the uh, uh, nodes and to make them available uh, on your uh, graphical interface just stop the node red and start it again brilliant now what if a node has new functions and you want to update it uh, to do it there's a few things that you have to do first of all uh, to make sure everything's running smoothly you have to upgrade and make sure your current version of the uh, Raspbian is up to date because you can run into tro troubles so run those three so uh, apt gets uh, updates and then upgrade and then lastly uh, destroy upgrade and check if your npm manager is up to date uh, so you can install new version using npm sudo npm i or install and then dash g npm and finally when everything is done all you have to do is just run npm outdated and i'll give you a list of all the nodes that are outdated obviously the nodes that has been published uh if you if your node has haven't been published yet you have to go to github and manually check if there is a new version so as you can see on the list in here i have a, a status which is linked node manually installed and it's via npm available so i can just install it via npm and i've got a node in here which is uh, available uh, for the update if i want to and if you want to update node just uh, run sudo npm uh, update and the node and name if you run into any troubles with node red you can rebuild it and update it using this command so sudo update node gs and node node red and that will take about 20 minutes and should get rid of all your problems now um you're not going to lose any of the personal details uh, from so all your setups all your flows everything's going to be saved it's just going to be a bit of time to, to complete the rebuild now we know how to add new nodes you know how to add the nodes that are not published so let's talk about the interface for a bit first thing uh, nodes are um, placed in a flow so this is the flow it looks like a kind of folder st structure if you click double click on the tab uh, you can rename your flow and you can set the status to enable disable and add some descriptions now you can add the flows in here uh, by pressing a plus button that will uh, give you a new flow and these are the flows you can have as many flows as possible and things to remember the data is not shared between flows so if you 
want to share data between flows itself, uh, you have to do it uh, in a special way. And we're going to talk about this in a data processing uh, part of this tutorial. Now, nodes itself, uh, we can split into three different groups. First, it's uh, input nodes. And those are in here in, the, in this named input uh, kind of tab. And you can see that they all have a dot on the right hand side and they all uh, will start the flow in one way or another. So what you're going to do, uh, there is some sort of input in here going into the node and that data is transferred from that node to the next node. So for example, in this case, the input is going to be a timestamp and I can decide to uh, enter the timestamp every second. And that, uh, that's every second timestamp is going to be moved from this node to, in this case, to the payload and displayed uh, in a tab. Now, the second type of uh, um, nodes are the outputs. So I had the out, uh, MQTT, the payload, the debug node, uh, HTTP response, and those are complete opposites. So the, the connection dot is on the right, uh, left hand side, and uh, these uh, basically usually end the flow uh, as the information either is going to be complete or sent over to another source. So you can send it to a different device, you can provide the output, you can provide some outcome of the function. And uh, lastly, we have and nodes which kind of classed as a function nodes and there's a few examples in here and these nodes have multiple dots from either side so you can have uh, uh, several dots let me just add a few as you can see i gonna have three dots in here on one side and these are placed in the middle and you can place multiple of them so you're gonna have one input node then you're gonna have some function node doing something with your script and then that's all at some point it's gonna go to the um, exit node. We're gonna talk in details on how the nodes work and how the different uh, outcomes uh, can be used. Obviously we can do, uh, another thing you can do is just kind of just drop and uh, drag and drop the nodes in between if you want to make your life a little bit easier so you don't have to reconnect them manually. There's that functionality, but basically the function nodes will process the data. So we're sending, for example, in here the timestamp. The timestamp is going to be, I don't know, converted into days, then converted into something else and then passed over. And those are your uh, function nodes. Now, there is another type of nodes that are, is not normally displayed. And those are your config nodes. You can find them in here when you go to configuration nodes. And those are nodes that kind of configure stuff. Uh, so some of the nodes require a specific config to be set prior before they can work. So if I'm going to use uh, one of the config nodes, um, the great example would be, oh, Elite, Elite is a good example. So if you can see in here, I have my uh, lights uh, that has been configured, but I can add a new config. And once I do that, and once I configure uh, this uh, basically fields, the config node is going to be added. Let me just delete this. Config node is going to be added in here. And you can see all the config nodes in here. And sometimes if you want to uninstall uh, nodes, it will prevent you from uninstalling the nodes unless you're going to delete the nodes. So if you want to get rid of the, one of the config, uh, config nodes, just go in here and double click it and cl uh, click on delete. And then you'll be able to remove the node from your node red. Now, most of the time, uh, while you're learning, you're going to be importing and exporting some of your flows. And the easiest way to do it is through the menu. So if you click on here, you've got import and export. Uh, so if you want to import something, let's say, uh, let's uh, get, grab something first to export it. So I'm going to go to my node. I'm going to select all the nodes here. And then I can export it to clipboard. And the clipboard can exp exp uh, export either selected node, current flow, or all flows. And I want to do the select, uh, selected nodes because I just selected these. Now to import them into a new flow, I can copy and paste, uh, obviously, if they within the node red. But to get the code from internet and import it, you have to have it in a clipboard, open the clipboard, and just paste the cl clipboard. Uh, didn't want to search my flows. Uh, and then click on import and you have it here. 
So that's how you export and import things. Another thing I want to talk about are the subflows. As you can see, I have two subflows in here. I've created them previously. Now, subflows are kind of like a mini flow. So what I've done, I've created a complicated setup in here that sends an HTTP request. And that request is it's a custom request. So basically, I have some sort of input, then it processes the device type and source, and then does different things and spits out a um, HTTP request. And I could copy and paste this every time I want to do this in a flow. But if you see, if I copy this and go to uh, maybe one of my complicated flows, uh, let me just go, for example, this one, and I wanted to copy this in here, you can see how quickly setup like this could be very, very complicated. Now, instead of doing this, uh, let me just delete this now. Instead of doing this, what I can do is save this as a subflow and just do something like that. And uh, that subflow contains all that information uh, from this field. So if I close this, go back here, uh, sorry, uh, not this one, socket. If I double click on here, it will bring me over to the template. So this is your subflow. When playing with Node-RED, there are two more things you, have, you want to pay attention to. Information. So if let's me open a new flow and add a sample flow. So this is going to be a dbook node and a timestamp node. And let me just deploy this. As you can see in the information tab, this is how you use the node uh, itself. So you're going to be reading all of this and learn how the node works and what you can do with it. And uh, as you can see, it uh, has an output, which this is the message I'm going to go to the debug node. And it's going to have uh, just a time that starts from January uh, in seconds, from January the 1st, 1917 seconds. So when I press the timestamp here to, to inject it, I'm expecting that timestamp to be sent to my payload. So let's try this. Yep, everything worked. And now, because I use the payload, payload is just kind of like a de uh, payload, uh, sorry, debug node, which is uh, monitoring in this case a payload. Uh, let me just clear this for you and show you again. It's, uh, it gives me the time in seconds right now. Now, this is a debug node when um, it's used basically to see what is the payload or what is the object if you change here and go to the objects. Uh, what is the object sent to the um, debug node? So you can uh, kind of slot it in anywhere uh, you want to monitor what do you receive and where. This is the kind. Of, this is how the message looks like, and this is your payload. Uh, so if you have something complicated and you want to see if it's working correctly, and you're not sure what is the message sent in this stage of your flow, then you connect the debug node, you deploy it and you run it through and you check your debug information in here. Now, when I say about deploying, what it does, it composes all the nodes uh, into a workable code for you and submits that to a server. And you have a three different versions. Full, it redeploys every single node across all the flows. Modified flows, it only deals with the flows that has been modified and then lastly modified nodes. It's good to remember which one you want to use. Most of the time you just want to use modified nodes because if you redeploy all of it, uh, some information may be lost that already has been stored in an old red server. So bear that in mind. Now, if you want to access the node red from the internet, you have to forward this port. So you have to go to your router settings and forward the port 1880 and uh, point it towards your IP address of the node red, and you'll be able to access via um, your VAN IP, so your external IP. So if you go to service like uh, no IP, and then you will be able to um, access it from online using some, you know, easy to remember website, like say, my node red address, and then dot DNS dot net and then double, uh, colon and 1880 and I'll be able to you'll be able to access your node red from outside so if you're going to enable the access from outside of your local network it's a good idea to set up the password and in order to do it first you have to install uh, the node red admin and you do that by running this with sudo so sudo 
and an npm install dash g node admin. We got because we're gonna need the node admin to generate the hash for us. Now, to generate once you've got this installed, uh, all you have to do is just uh, run this command, which is node admin hash, and it will generate a hash of your password. So you'd never enter your password itself. You just generate the hash. So I'm gonna use password. And I have a hash in here. Now we're going to use this hash in a settings.js. So we have to just check the files. We have a settings.js in here. So we're going to open this and edit sudo nano and then settings.js. So when you open this, the hash that we just used can be used in here to set a password access to your node red. And you can, so you can see the lines, lines in here. Uh, need to be uncommented and then your password hash needs to be entered in here So next time you log in it will prompt you for your username, which is admin and then password which is uh, In here, so that's how you secure your node red installation So by now you should be ready to create your first flow and some workable solutions in Node red server. So I've got a plan in here for the next tutorial and that's gonna be your first flow actually And we're gonna talk in details about node types and how to use them We're also gonna uh, talk about how data is passed from a uh, node to node and also we're gonna work with a working example So this is actual proper start to the um, Hands-on experience with node red. So if you want to get notified because the video is gonna be released in a few days uh, subscribe to my channel, press that bell icon, or follow me on social media and you're gonna get a notification when the tutorial is out. Also consider supporting me uh, via Patreon or PayPal, you're gonna find all those links in the description of the video. Now, I've mentioned that before, but if you want a written article, there's a patch to this video, and it's also in the description of this video, so go and check this out. And for now, I hope you join the series, leave me a feedback if you want to, and I'm gonna see you in the next one very soon. Until then.